All right, so now we're going to see Jeremy's way of doing the sum of squares. Um, so what he's going to do, uh, his method, and oh boy, I didn't plan it. Oh, I would be writing this through the tripod, so I'll give it my best shot. He's going to write uh, some triangles. One, two, two, three, three, three. And then what he's going to do is he's going to rotate these triangles. So the one goes down here. Two, two, three, three, three. And then I'll add in another triangle here. Where the one is rotated over here, so it's gonna go one, two, two, three, three, three. Now, first of all, let me ask you a question. Why do these the numbers in these triangles represent the sums of squares? Can you tell me? You have um the one here represents one times one, two twos represents two times two, and then three threes represents three times three times three. Okay, very nice. Plus, plus, a plus, a plus, three plus three plus three. Yeah, yeah, good, good. And what happens uh, when I rotate the triangle like this and add up the numbers in this in the positions? What do I get? For example, what do I get at the top here? So, like, you'd add this, this, and this? Yeah, you get yeah. seven. All right. Ish. That's another seven. All right, in that position, yep. Two, two, three, that's another seven. Okay. Down in the bottom corner, seven. Seven. Seven, and then another seven. Okay. So it's, it's somewhat of a surprise. Mm -hmm. We got all the same number. Mm. Why did that happen? And what is that number? Well, that number looks to be 2n plus 1. Okay. And, why? well, I mean, why? Just because of the rotations, at least for the corners, your corners are rotating between two numbers. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have two spots where there are threes and one spot where there are one. So, or two spots where there are n and one spot where there are n minus two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, good. So actually, it turns out there's an easy way to see the corners. Good. Um, and for the these middle three, you have n minus one, n minus one, and then n. So yeah, it's going to equal that the three n. Minus two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Three n minus two. Or well, yeah, two n minus one. Is there? Maybe this is the same. Yeah, they're the same here. Here they're the same. Okay, so, but that shows it might take a little work to see that the inside works because one way we thought it might be three n minus two, another way, in this case, it turns out to be the same. Maybe we'll take a look at the four by four or the, the triangle with four entries in a second. All right. Um, but if this adds up to 2n plus 1, um, we have n, n, and 1, I guess. Okay. So if this adds up to a triangle with um, all n, uh, 2n plus 1s in it, how many entries are in a triangle if I have the bottom row is n? How many how many total spots are there in the triangle? It's n plus n minus one that's about down to one. So n times n plus one over two. Okay. So this would add up to seven times sorry, two n plus one times n times n plus one over two. And then, slightly out of room, but let me. We'll, I'll erase these top ones, and we'll see. So this side over here, the numbers themselves add up to two n plus one, and there's n times n plus one over two of them, 
Now what did I get on this side when I had my three triangles? What was the sum? Um, well you had... Well, each triangle you had three n's, two n minus one, and then one n minus two. Well, what do I have in each triangle? You have one, one squared plus two squared plus three yeah. squared. One squared plus two squared plus, we'll set up to n squared. Mm -hmm. And how many did I have? You had three. 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 Huh. So what does that tell me? One squared plus two squared plus three squared plus n squared plus? 2n plus 1 times n times n plus 1 over 6. Yeah, just like we found before. So let's just do a quick exercise and, and, and let's see if this works for the, for the triangles that have 4 down to 4. 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, plus, let's see, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4. Plus, where's the one here? One, two, two, three, 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 four, 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 four. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's going on here? Here it looks like in the corners we have nine. Nine. Okay. In the corners we have nine. It's just like we like we expected. This, four, three, two, that's nine. And that one okay. seems to be nine. Um, yep, so all of those, all of, actually all of the spaces next to the cor next to a corner are going to have nine. Okay, good. Actually, good noticing that symmetry. And what, then, tell me about your thought process there. How did you notice that? Well, so I looked at um, well, anything next to a corner is either it's not gonna you're not gonna have the one. Yeah. Um, and then just looking at like one of them here, two, and. You can just look at there's a triangle like inside this triangle around here mm -hmm. like that, and then that's like what's gonna rotate. So cool, yeah, nice. Gonna form and, then and then your center one doesn't yeah. rotate. It's, it's gonna be three, 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 and so it's gonna be nine. Interesting. Okay, so at least this gives us a, a, a sense that this works, and you found a great way to see the outside using rotational symmetry. That was that was fantastic. Um, and then, do you think this is going to always hold true for any triangle? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. And maybe it's not so hard to prove, but uh, we're going to go on to one application of these ideas now. Okay? Yeah.